Hey, welcome to SI Now. I'm Maggie. That's Robin. That is Hall of Fame running back and Super Bowl MVP, three-time Super Bowl champion. Emmett Smith is here on behalf of Michelin, and we are going to get to that good work yes. in just a moment. But first, just thoughts on last night's game, okay? The Patriots escape with a win against Tampa Bay. Be honest with us, Emmett. If you had a kicker, Missed three field goals in a game that tight, and it seems like that important. How would guys be treating that kicker well, first, this week? Well, the guys probably would, would not be saying any, a whole lot publicly outside of supporting the kicker. Uh, but internally, uh, in, in my personal view, it would be like, all we want you to do is kick the ball through the uprights. <laughs> We're not asking you to make no tackles. We're not asking you to run pass routes. We want you to just put the ball through the uprights. You got one job. You have one job and one <laughs> job only. Please get it done. And they could have used every one of the field goals that was missed last night. Meanwhile, Brady ties Manning and Favre most wins of all time. The Patriots, they've obviously done some winning. Five Super Bowls in 17 years, been there seven times. Your Cowboys won three out of four. Mm -hmm. Both dynasties, how would you compare the Patriots dynasty to your Cowboys team? You can't compare the two because Belichick has been there for the whole entire time. Uh, for the Cowboys, though, I mean, we, Jimmy leaves in 1994. Uh, after the 93 Super Bowl. So, um, I mean, you really can't compare the two because I think systematically uh, the Patriots have kept most of the pieces of their coaching staff intact. And they have evolved everything else around Tom Brady. And so they've, they've done a very, very good job of bringing in the right talent, uh, solidifying the offensive line to keep their quarterback upright, giving them some guys that he can throw the ball to, a variety of guys that are making plays. They have a system that is pretty strong. Do you ever play the what if game if Jimmy had stayed the core of Dallas together? Not saying that Barry Switzer was not a good coach, right. but do you ever play the what if that you guys could have had five or? More? No, no, I don't. But when, when, when people ask the question, I have a chance to sit back and reflect over it. I, I look at uh, um, what was transpiring around that time frame. Uh, obviously, Jimmy did leave, but free agency was starting to take apart our team. Mm. Uh, so if you go back to the uh, Super Bowl 28, uh, we had an offensive line that was first and second string offensive line that was pretty strong. You can sub them out quite naturally and quite easily and not miss a beat. Uh, but once free, free agency started coming around, we started losing some of these quality players and these quality backup, uh, which changed the whole dynamic of our team. wonder if you're worried about that now with this incarnation of the Dallas Cowboys, considering how great that offensive line is. You know what? Settle a debate for us because Robin and I, we keep arguing about this, and it's going back to last year. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe that Zeke Elliott did not win Rookie of the Year. I feel back. like that was a robbery that is of, <laughs> of the highest proportion. Robin is on, well, you can say for yourself. Dak you, Prescott. Yeah, I think he's more important to the Cowboys' success both now and going forward. Well, um, see, I, I think we, do, we spend too much time trying to pick apart who's the best. We, have two, we had two of the best players on the same team. They could have shared the Rookie of the Year award because they both had had dynamic years and they both needed each other. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, we do have two of the best dynamic players going forward. And you need both of them. You got to have a solid running game in order to open up the passing game. You got to have a solid passing game to have the defense respect that you can throw the ball down the field as well. So which creates room and opportunities for everybody offensively. And that's the beautiful thing about our Dallas Cowboys offense is that balance. I mean, it's not like Brady has to drop back and throw the ball 45 times or 50 times a game or Manning had to do the same thing. Uh, uh, and Drew Brees has to do the same thing. So with us, it's not quite that way. We have the, the flexibility of having a home run hitter like Ezekiel Elliott. We also have an efficient quarterback in Dak Prescott. We have the balance of a tight end with Jason Witten and also Terrence Williams uh, along with Dez Bryant outside. So that balance gives us a chance to be control the clock, uh, give our defense a chance to rest, which our defense needs to improve. And so it's that part that I look at the overall game and I look at these two players and say these are marquee players for a long time. Now the Cowboys haven't been as dominant to start this year. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel Elliott's numbers overall look fine but his yards per attempt are way down from a year ago. Any mm -hmm. concern there? No, no concern because uh, when you uh, thrust on the scene the way he did last year and rushed for that many yards uh, throughout the course of a season of, uh, of his rookie year, Teams have the whole offseason to prepare for you. They have a chance to look at a lot of tape. And the number one thing that I know every defensive coordinator comes into every football game every week with, we must stop the run. Yeah. 
we must stop the run. That Force, was Maggie's argument for We must stop the run. <laughs> Make it a for me. And so, and, which says, Dak Prescott, you have to beat us. You have to make the long throws to Dez Bryant and make that connection. If you don't, then we're going to slow you down. We're going to get more uh, three and outs, and we're going to have more opportunities to, uh, to put more points up. You know, Derek Wolf said after they played the Broncos and lost, he said, we tried, we dared Dak to beat us, and he couldn't. And right. I wonder how Dak would internalize something well, like that. Well, uh, he would be prepared next time. Yeah. And uh, if we meet the Broncos again, it will be in the Super Bowl. And so uh, I think uh, what he went through and what our Cowboys went through uh, was, was, was a wake-up call. Uh, it was something that, that says this is what the formula looks like right now. Until you prove to the rest of the league that you can beat this formula, we're going to continue to do this to you week in and week out. And meanwhile, they rebounded and now a big game against the Packers this weekend, which we're all looking forward to. Uh, switching gears a little bit, I'm sure you saw this story, Cam Newton having mm -hmm. to apologize mm -hmm. after he called uh, female reporters a uh, question about route patterns. He said it was funny. Not shocking, Cam received a lot of backlash right. for this. One of his sponsors, Dan and Yogurt, said they're not going to feature him in any of his ad campaigns. Actually, let's take a look quickly at Cam's apology from yesterday. After careful thought, I understand that my word choice was extremely degrading and disrespectful uh, to women. And to be honest, that was not my intention. And if you are a person who took offense to what I said, I sincerely apologize to you. Also mentioned his two daughters mm -hmm. in that apology. What would you make of it? I thought it was a great apology. I thought it, was, it may have come a little late, but nonetheless, he apologized in the most um, professional way possible, and it seems to be very contrite. But the apology was the first start. The next is how, do he, how does he carry himself from this point forward? Uh, I think this was a very upfront, personal learning lesson. And, and it's a training film for a lot of people in their apologies. And so I appreciate what he did. I, I take him for his word. Now it's about putting the words into actions. He's been in front of the media for most of his professional life. And mm -hmm. even before that, winning the national championship, number one overall pick in the draft, right. Super Bowl mm -hmm. appearance, everything. The fact that he would say that, though, in front of a pool of reporters. I mean, has your thoughts about him changed at all in the last 48 hours? No, they, they haven't thought. Uh, they haven't changed. Uh, I, I, first of all, I, I know people make mistakes, and I'm not going to sit here and dissect everything that Cam Newton does or any other football player does. But uh, the thing that he has done, he stepped up, he, he's given a sincere uh, apology, and I'm allowed that to be what it is. And so from this point forth, hopefully the, uh, the female reporter and other females around the country and around the world receive his apology the way I'm, rec I'm receiving it. And so, and give him a chance to, to get on the right path and start to go from, go from there. But as, as, as it would be uh, done, press is going back further, trying to find other ways to try to say, this is a bad guy. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, no one has, um, um, I ain't gonna say no one has the right, people can do what they wanna do, but people are now moving to the point of overkill. This is where you draw the line and say, this is overkill. He's already apologized. You're trying to find more dirt on him to try and bring him further down. Uh, Dan and already got rid of his, his, his deal. So allow things to move forward, and uh, let's go from here. Now, we talked about the argument. It's amazing we expect so much from our athletes, but we don't expect the same thing from our president and the chief. Well, I mean, that's really interesting because we talk about this a lot, about the idea that it, you can say athletes aren't role models, but in practice it's not true it's because not true. we put athletes on such a big pedestal. Yes. I mean, were you feeling that way back in your playing days? Did you feel like all the eyes were on you in this way? There are always eyes on you. And, and, and uh, like I told someone earlier today, no matter what you do, you're not going to make everybody's, everybody happy. Sure. And uh, so you have to be the best you that you possibly can, and you have to live and be comfortable with who you are in your skin. Uh, but things like this. Uh, these are little, these are mistakes. These are things that he may have thought was funny and probably was joking around and someone took offense to it. Uh, the line is, 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 it moves so much. I mean, I was in a, in a training this week with my, in, in a retreat this week, and, and I have the tendency to say, hello, love. How you doing, love? Good, goodbye, love. Somebody said, well, you got to stop saying that hmm. because that might be offensive to someone. I'm like, I'm just being courteous. I'm being, do you say that? Do you say love to guys? No, I do not. I say, what's up, my man? Mm -hmm. oh, what's up, homie? That's what I say. But that I have to be careful now. And so we all have to be very careful about 
by what we say. Somebody said, somebody said something to me, I could just like, oh, that might be offensive. But it's just a matter, everybody got their sensitivity levels are so high. For what reasons? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you bring it back to the president. It's like, I think when he says things that are blatantly sexist and blatantly racist, homophobic, things, all of xenophobic, those things. All, all of those things. things, it puts people's rabbit ears on. How would you handle the, this current climate? I mean, the, the, the Cowboys, to follow up on what you said, they had the, everybody kneel before the anthem and then stood up during the anthem. You're obviously and not playing. And they still playing. got booed. Yeah, you're not <laughs> playing during the, this time right, period. Right. What would you do if you were? Well, I would do exactly what the Cowboys did. And I think they took the, pro the process was they met as a team, they met as a complete organization, said, okay, here are the issues, here are both sides of the equation. What do we want to do as a unit? And they came together and said, this is what we're going to settle on and this is what we're going to do. So they all went out, including the owners, took a knee before the National Anthem or right after the National Anthem and kneeled and got up and, and they still got booed. So no matter what you do, people are very fickle. People are, uh, it, it, it's kind of, it, it's crazy to me. It's strange. You have, you got to pay taxes. You will pay taxes. You have the rights to vote. You have the rights to protest. You have the right of free speech, just like every other American in the United States has. And, but yet, people are saying, you can't do it because of what? Either because you make too much money or because you're an athlete or because you're not even a politician, so you have no reason to comment on this, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, which is, in, in, my, in my sense, I, I, can't, I, I think is absolutely ludicrous. Would you feel the need to say something publicly about the president? Why not? I mean, he has the right to say something public about everything that he wants to talk about. And so it, it's somewhat reciprocal. Uh, you vote, and you vote for the people that you choose to vote for. Right now, our president is President Donald, Donald Trump. That's our president. That's my president as well. I may not agree with everything that he says, everything that he does, but that's our president. Interesting. And, of course, you have kids, so I'm curious. You probably have these kind of conversations with them, right? Well, without a doubt. My kids are, my kids were very scared. Really? They were, they, my, my daughter was, was like, I'm not sure if I want to go to school now. We might have to move to Canada. Mm -hmm. I mean, she felt like that, but I had to explain to her. I said, baby, don't, don't get caught up in all of this. Uh, all of the hype around things, all of the negativity around everything. Um, he is our president. Let's just pray that things work out for the better. Is that a tough conversation to have? Because athletes a lot of times are asked to be role models, and that's a controversial topic in and of itself. Is it difficult to explain to your daughter, you know, that maybe you can't hold the, the president as a role model? Well, I never told her that the president was her role model. Uh, at the end of the day, I look to my kids, and they look to me, and I hope I am their role model. I'm not pointing to anyone outside of my house. Because everyone outside of my house, uh, we don't have access to their, their lives 24-7. Yeah. In this household, they have access to my life and, and my wife's life every day. So we have the most potential to have the best influence on our kids in terms of how we treat each other, how we raise our kids, and the words that we say to our kids, and, 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 the, and, the, and, and the ethics that we believe in, uh, which are truly American values also. And so at the end of the day, if you go out and you have a coach and the coach give you great advice, great insight, or a teacher that give you great advice or great insight, or a neighbor, someone that you become fond of and that's inspiring you to your level of greatness to add on top of what we're doing, awesome. Yeah. That's great. And that's all you look for. You look for people to continue to add positive things to everyone's life. Bringing this back to football, I mean, you have a young son who's a sophomore in high school, and he's a running back. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't imagine some of the pressure that he might feel there. What are the conversations you've had with him about being Emmett Smith's son and playing football? He's under the under his spotlight, and every time he steps foot on the football field, don't think that the, oh, the opposing team does not know that you are my kid. So, with that said, you need to step up. You need to bust them in the mouth early. <laughs> And you need to let them know that you're not, not some kid from this affluent neighborhood that, that, that's not competitive or not aggressive, et cetera, et cetera. On that football field, you can be as mean as you want to, son. After the game, you shake his hand, say, great game, walk off the football field, you can be as polite as you want to. That's where you, that's where you draw the line at. On that football field, you can be a maniac. But when it's over with, you got to leave all that on the football field and walk away. We look at you, obviously, as this amazing running back, but you are a dad. Your son is 16, He's 15. You 15, you're teaching him how to drive. Right. I mean, what is more nerve-wracking just as a parent? <laughs> is it watching him behind the wheel or watching him take the field? 
watching them take the field and getting behind the wheel. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they both were one and the same. Uh, just like I had to be taught how to drive, my son and, and daughters had to be taught how to drive as well. And we had to talk about various aspects of the car. Uh, one of the things that we talk about is uh, tire pressure. We talk about safety driving, defensive driving, being able to, to be aware of your surroundings and, uh, and so forth. But most importantly, how dangerous that car really is. Uh, but when you actually put a vehicle in a child's hand, uh, not only do you need to talk to them about uh, defensive driving, but they need to understand the nuances of the car, the things that make up the car, gas, oil and gas, tra transmissions and all those kind of things, but most importantly, tire pressure. Uh, in the case of uh, making sure that your car is safe, you need to make sure that you're not riding on bald tires. Mm -hmm. So when you hit the brakes, the actual tires actually work for you versus working against you. Bald tires will make you slide a lot further than non-bald tires. If the tires does not have the proper air in it, uh, when you hit the brake, the wheel may stop, but then the tire may continue to slide. But if you have the proper uh, tire uh, tread on your, on your, on your car, it, it will stop. We should say you are here on behalf of Michelin. It is National Teen Driver Safety yes. Week. That's October 15th to 21st. Yes. Obviously, this is a great message for everyone out there. Go to michelinman.com slash sharing safety, and that's where you're going to get more information about yes, this, which is really something fantastic. Well, listen, before we let you go, and we've <laughs> loved this interview, by the way, we like to do this thing called anything but football. We have a okay. bunch of questions that we want to ask you that really okay. have nothing to do with football. So okay. let's get it started here. What's we know obviously about your Dancing with the Stars prowess. What's your favorite song to dance to? Oh man, oh that's a good one. Um, I don't know. What, <laughs> what about that Migos song? Uh, the Migos song that mentions what, you. Im 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I love Amigos. I love Amigos. I mean, they, they, they're good. Uh, but um, Bad and Bougie. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Hey, that's Robin and I's favorite, too. He was like in common. Favorite animal. Favorite animal. Wow. Tiger. Me, too. Favorite superhero. Superhero. Favorite superhero. Superman. Mine is, what's a TV show you're embarrassed to admit that you watch? <sighs> hmm. Hmm. Embarrassed to say I watch. Would it be like American Idol, <laughs> Dance with the Stars? <laughs> Those aren't very embarrassing. No, you and the rest of America's watching everything. Yeah, yeah, but uh, probably uh, I really don't have a show that I. SpongeBob, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Who has made Emmett Smith starstruck? Starstruck. You know, after meeting Jordan and meeting so many great athletes and presidents like Clinton, Obama, and George Bush. Uh, uh, yeah, I even met Donald Trump himself. So, I mean, it's kind of hard to say. It's kind of hard to say. I even met Nelson Mandela. So it's kind of hard to say. It really is. Oprah Winfrey, I mean, Tiger Woo. I mean, like. <laughs> Give us a story about one of those people you just mentioned, something that you just will never, ever forget. Uh, Donald Trump talks in certainties. Emmett, you're going to do this. And you're gonna, we're going to send this to you. You're going to pick up the plane. You're going to get on a flight. You're going to come out here. You're going to judge this universe for me. And we're going to have a great time. So go ahead and just say yes right now, Re regardless of what your schedule says. You can move all that. When, way when was that? <laughs> this was some years ago. And if someone had told you he would wind up president then, what would you have said? Well, unfortunately, my schedule was changed. I, wasn't, I couldn't change my schedule. I was under contract obligation, so I couldn't do something at that particular time. But I did end up doing Miss Universe, and, uh, and, and, and I've done a couple other pageants as well, though. So I think the answer was shocked. You'd be shocked <laughs> if someone told you then that he'd be president. Yeah, well... Why you not? never know. This is America. America says you can be anything that you want to be if you work hard enough and, and believe in American values. Go for it. Emmett Smith here on behalf of Michelin. It's National Teen Driver Safety Week, the 15th through the 21st. Go to michelinman.com slash sharing safety. Download a copy of the Coach's Handbook, and you can yes. find all of these safety tips. Really appreciate your oh, time, Emmett you Smith. Guys. Thank you so much for being thank here. You. This thank was a real you. pleasure. Appreciate it, Emmett. Yes, sir. Let's talk college football with our own Pete Mundo. He is busy in the newsroom, so let's head there courtesy of Toyota. Let's go places, Pete. More trouble for Louisville this time for the football team, though. They lose to NC State on the road, and despite Lamar Jackson's three touchdowns, the Cardinals now have two losses on the season. Of course, the first was to Clemson. Is there still a path for Lamar Jackson to win the Heisman, or are his chances now completely over?
Maggie, at this point, there is no path to Lamar Jackson. Not that his stats haven't still been really good, but you look at it. I went back 30 years, and there are just two players in the past 30 years to win a Heisman Trophy with three conference losses. Robert Griffin III in 2011 for Baylor, and then you go back to 2007 with Tim Tebow at Florida. It's just not likely to happen. Louisville already has two conference losses, and now they still got to go on the road to Florida State, a couple of other tricky games as well. So... I don't see how it's likely, especially since Archie Griffin's the only guy to ever win back-to-back -back Heisman trophies. You've got to have an outstanding season, and also you've got to have a really great team season, and Louisville does not look like it's going to have it. Let's stick with NC State for a moment. They made a statement. Now they've beaten two top ACC teams at home. They still have Clemson, which is also at home on November 4th. They're 3-0 in the ACC. Do they have the pieces to upset Clemson? What NC State does have, Maggie, is a fantastic defensive line, and they're going to go up against a freshman quarterback in Kelly Bryant. He's been really good, but if they can get him startled just a little bit, then they can maybe get that Clemson team off their rocker a little bit, which would be great for NC State, would be a massive upset and would really turn that conference upside down in many ways. I don't think it's likely, but NC State right now is the best team that could potentially give Clemson some trouble throughout the ACC schedule. Meanwhile, Saquon Barkley has been the talk of the college football season. Some people saying he's the best prospect in a long, long time. Let's say he right now is number one. Which quarterback do you think has the best chance of unseating him? Robin, I've been on his train all season long, and that is Baker Mayfield. Over 75% of his passes he's completing, 13 touchdowns, zero interceptions. He has that marquee non-conference win at Ohio State. And you look at the rest of the Oklahoma schedule, and they are going to play Texas. They have to play Oklahoma State, and they have to play TCU. Those are three very high-profile games. If he continues this kind of season, there's no doubt to be May Baker Mayfield is going to be right up there with Saquon Barkley at the end when we get close to this Heisman Trophy ceremony. Pete, appreciate it as always. Enjoy the college football weekend and get back to work in the newsroom. Anytime, guys. Fallout from the latest NCAA scandal continues as reports say Rick Pitino received 98% of the money Louisville got from Adidas as part of the school's deal with the shoe company. Does any of this still surprise you, Maggie? No, of course <laughs> not. But I would say this. I think that because college basketball coaches, I think more than any coach in any sport, are the face of the program. Probably used to be college football, but nowadays those jobs are a little bit more. They, they turn over a little faster. College basketball, I think that Rick Pitino could probably, in his own mind, make a case that he is worth 98% and that he should get 98% because can we name five, the starting five for Louisville right now? Probably not, but you know that Rick Pitino is the coach there. You know he won a national championship there. So I can see how he would be, feel like he is probably worth it. Unfortunately, it completely rips off the kids, which is what this entire scandal is about to begin with. Yeah, I don't disagree with what you said, and Rick Pitino obviously has had tons of success, but when people look back on this scandal, we know how big the egos a lot of these guys are. Rick Pitino is going to be the face of it. And then how does that influence how he's looked at overall? Do people start to forget some of the success and, and point more toward the scandal? Interesting legacy question that you bring up there. What I think is also interesting is looking and reading of the Louisville Courier Journal, who's done a great job in the story, obviously following it, that the Louisville athletic director, Tom Urich, who's come under fire a couple different times, hiring uh, Bobby Petrino was one of them after some of his previous failures. But he, they're saying that there's almost a greater than 50% chance that he could keep his job after this, that somehow he would survive this scandal. Right now he's on academic leave or um, unpaid leave, that he would somehow keep his job. I find that fascinating. Meanwhile, the U.S. men's national team has a huge World Cup qualifier match against Panama tonight. Earlier this week, our own Grant Wall explained what is at stake for the U.S., how serious is the possibility of the U.S. missing the World Cup? This is a legitimate possibility, guys. And the U.S. has qualified for every men's World Cup going back to 1990. It's got a great streak going, but they really had a tough time in World Cup qualifying, lost their first two games of the final round, lost at home here in New York to Costa Rica last month. And there's a lot of margin for error in this CONCACAF Regional World Cup qualifying. 
but the U.S. has almost exhausted that margin for error to the point where they need to win this Friday night at home against Panama and Orlando. And if not, that really makes it possible that the U.S. could miss World Cup 2018. Crazy. That game tonight in Orlando, and while we wait and see the fate of the U.S. men's team, arguably the biggest soccer star on the planet, Lionel Messi, may not be playing in the World Cup. Argentina had a 0-0 draw against Peru, which means they have zero margin for error moving forward. Robin, would Messi missing the World Cup remove him from the best ever debate, which he's in with Cristiano Ronaldo? Remove seems strong. But it does hurt because when you're talking about the best ever, not one of the best ever, people start to really nitpick. I mean, is it fair to blame one individual for a, a sport where 11 guys are on the, the field at the, the same time? That is, is tough to do. I happen to lean Ronaldo in that argument because of the size. Maybe it's a bit of a, a Durant or Curry who would you rather have sort of conversation. But it definitely hurts his chances because – if someone's making the case for Messi, the easy comeback is, if he was so good, why didn't they make the World Cup? Well, let's be honest. Ronaldo is also in danger of missing the World <laughs> Cup. Portugal is against the ropes also. This will be a terrible World Cup. No United States, no Messi, no Ronaldo. Yeah, I don't know how much Fox is going to like that as a broadcast rights, but... I think that this would absolutely do nothing to Messi's legacy. I think that you can understand, you can point to all of these different reasons why Argentina is struggling, and I would not point to Messi as any one of them. He is actually playing fantastic. He is setting up his teammates. They are not finishing. I mean, how much more can he do? It reminds me of after the Super Bowl, we saw Giselle running after Tom Brady after they lost to the Giants the second time. And someone said, hey, Giselle, what did you think of the game? And she said, he can't throw the ball and catch the ball. You know, it was yeah. like this famous quote about Brady. It's kind of the same thing. Like, what do you can, can he single handedly win a game? No, it's impossible. It's too much to expect, even from someone who's considered the best ever. I'd also point to the fact that Argentina has gone through three different managers of their national team since they lost to Germany in the last men's World Cup. And think about it. We talked a lot about how the Atlanta Falcons, you know, how could they come back from blowing that big Super Bowl lead that they had and how would it damage the team? I mean, think about what happened to Argentina. They lose that match against Germany and now they have four years to think about it and they keep changing managers. I feel like there's no cohesion here and I feel like this team, I mean, I am shocked that they would be missing, that they could miss at the World Cup, but let's look a little bit inside what's happening. Maybe it isn't that shocking. We can settle the Messi versus Ronaldo Ronaldo debate in a game of FIFA perhaps yes. a, a little bit later on, but a video game that's a little bit older is Tech Mobile, and I had a chance to play Kyle Brandt of Good Morning Football on the NFL Network in the old classic. Joined now by Kyle Brandt of Good Morning Football every weekday at 7 o'clock on the NFL Network, and Kyle on his Twitter bio it says he can beat anyone at Tech Mobile. Yeah. So look what we did. This is unbelievable. I feel like I'm seeing a celebrity match with an ex-girlfriend. And meanwhile, you're my twin brother. So there's all sorts of weird stuff going I was going to say you look pretty good looking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not as good as you, my friend. We're like the Hardy Boys. <laughs> <laughs> I get to Are we going to play? Are you going to be Jeff? Yeah. Okay. Or Goofus and Gallant. Maybe we're them. All right, Are let's go. Play this game? Let's do it. I think you've got the, the first player controller. So let's set it up for two players here. And isn't it just glorious? Look at this screen. You know I'm going right down to Los Angeles. All right, I'm going to be Los Angeles. Do oh, they even yes. have fans? I yes. mean, they, they moved like four times since then. Who knows what team it is even with Los all right, I'm going to go with the 49ers. It feels I'm like so a, a safe pick here. <laughs> All right, let's kick it off. Don't put up no brick now, Robin. All right, I've got to remember how to do this. It, it, there we go. What do you mean? It's B and A. It's That's simpler times. To There's too many buttons nowadays. B and A, and it is Tim Brown. We got a Heisman Trophy winner out of Notre Dame. One of the, oh, look out. Teams. Oh, man. Okay. There we go. I got That's, you down. Uh, by the way, decent special teams there. Decent yeah, special teams. not bad. What I mean, I didn't do? give up the big play. Uh, right. I, I feel see. like you're going to look for a big pass early. I'm going to try and pick your play. Let's you're see what happens You're going to pick my here. play. Let's yeah. find out. Jay Schrader, you can pick your play all you want. Let's see what he does. Oh, boy, the pass oh. rush. See? Unbelievable. Look at that. You're going to be sick of me by the time. And the game already froze. You froze the game. I froze the game. It's because I hit the table. Hit the table. Right? They told us not to hit the one table. One thing they told us not <laughs> to do, and it took exactly one play, and I hit the table. You sacked me for a loss. So what do we do? We just go right back to the drawing board. And I'm going to go to Marcus Allen, who's out on the open field out of the University of Southern California. And there he goes. Who, right. in, uh, who in today's game would yes. you like to see in Tech Mobile? Ooh, I mean, I, I think, oh, no, look out. I think Odell probably, you know? I mean, Odell, he'd be the guy, if you ran the slant him, he would just be gone. But I also think, plus, I, this Tecmo Bowl doesn't have a, oh, boy, look out, Bo. 
Isn't it odd about this game that the safeties can catch up to anyone? Oh, that was a nasty move, Bo! <laughs> um, I hit the table again. You did hit the table okay. again. Okay, I'd like to see Odell, um, and then, you know, I always try to support this guy. I'd like to see Kirk Cousins. You like that? You like that? I don't know why. Kirk Cousins amuses me. He always seems like he's like 26 going on 52. And since Kirk I Cousins am myself, is the yes. one guy Kirk you're Cousins. Right? That's right, Jail. That's a touchdown. <laughs> Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is my guy. He listens to Creed. He uh, just had his first son. Uh, he's a chucker. You he's admit unafraid. publicly you listen to Creed. I give you props for that. I said he listens to uh, Creed. There was a time. Do you tell me you never listen to Creed, Robin? My own prison, arms wide open, human clay. The ref Scott just Steph said arms wide that. open. With <laughs> your, with your <laughs> you know who was wide open? Todd Christensen on that touchdown. Uh, he yeah. was like the Scott Stapp of this game. I should have um, made Can a I stipulation onside? where yes. you couldn't have picked uh, Bo Jackson. Oh, that was the worst kickoff I've ever seen. Bo Jackson is the most dominant video game athlete of all time. I would say second is probably Michael Vick from 2004. Uh-oh. I think you're going to house this kick. I don't yeah. know how to switch players. There we go. Oh, I can run some clock while I'm doing it. You just had a kick return for a touchdown. How do I switch guys? Do I um, press, what is it? Select? I think it's B. B? All right. Yeah. I, I tried B. So you I'm, distract me with your conversation. I'm used to Ninja Gaiden or whatever it was called. Can we play that next? What about which player yes. from the Tecmo era would you want to see now? Would I, ooh, um, I'm going to line up right now with Mr. Howie Long. Oh, wait, what is this? Wow, am I using that a ringer? Is this Billy <laughs> Hoyle playing with Sidney Dean? White man can't jump? You're up 7 nothing. What is I know, but you're going right down the field. What player from the Tecmo era? Um, Cap Bozo. It was a uh, tight end for the Bears. Cap, his name was Cap uh -huh. Bozo. Is and that uh, just a name-based thing? Yeah, 100% name-based yeah. thing. No, of course. If your name's Cap, I want you in the league. And... Um, Let's see if Howie Long can come up with something special. That's an interception in the end zone. Oh, oh Mike Haynes, like, they won't let me run it out. Critical red zone interception. Yeah, that a little was... bit like Jameis Winston, you know, a little loose, fast and loose. But you, I'm going to make you pay for it now. Let's see if we can just put another seven on the board, and I will not bang the table. Who's the best defense in the NFL right now? Best defense in the NFL right now? Well, I thought it was going to be the Giants here in New York. You know what, Robin? I They're thought not the, good. No, I thought the Giants were going to the Super Bowl, and I'm not afraid to say that. I know everyone's supposed to, like, bury their, their cold takes, but I thought it was going to be Tom Brady versus Eli Manning three, and I wanted it. I wanted that uh, rubber match. It's not even a rubber match. Eli won two of them. I thought the Giants' defense was going to be the best in the league. They're terrible. You cannot get me out. Oh, Bo Jackson's just going to walk this one yeah. in. I'm going to run it up like I'm Deshaun Jackson. Oh, Got me on the one-yard line. Don't like get that guy in the Bears. Yeah. Can I do a quarterback draw with Jay Schrader? Or maybe I'll just let, let's see here. Um, I'm, I'm staying on the your knowledge of the Raiders roster circa this era. Well, I mean, this is, oh, no, that's going to be a big loss. Oh, Marcus Allen! Marcus Allen. Nice job not hitting the table. Operate. I almost did it. Yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a table hitter guy. You know, on our show, I always hit the table. I'm always uh, making messes, everything like that. But we're, you know what I'm making a mess of right now? I, I'm sorry, Robin, but there's a goose egg on your score column. Right yeah, I'm gonna here. have to. I'm gonna have to get in the game here. Look at Marcus Allen just doing bad things. Get off of him. He's gonna score. Oh, you got him at the one. His fantasy owners were furious about that down at the one yard line. Speaking of fantasy, yes. uh, Nate Burleson's on your show. Did he ever cost you a fantasy season? You know what's so funny? I'm glad you brought that up because Nate Burleson had a massive season in Minnesota. All right. He had a season where he, um, Jay Schrader touched on. He had a thousand yard season as Randy Moss's number two. And I remember, I'm, I was talking about that. He's like, oh, did you get me in fantasy that year? I'm like, no, no, no. I got you the next year when Randy left and you were supposed to be number one. Why did they give you uh, I don't know. Just double <laughs> zero, like Jim Otto. Maybe that's the reference. But um, yes, I had Nate in fantasy and it was not a productive time. Not, not in that season. He's always been, the, he was that, like at the end, he was like that proverbial, like, Wide receiver three when he was with Detroit. Yeah. He's like, oh, Nate Burleson got me a touchdown. or got me 72 yards. But um, he is in my fantasy. I'm the worst kicker in this game. I haven't kicked in a while. That's he a was, humble brag, being that it's 21 nothing. You know what, Robin? I have to tell you, I do think you gave me a faulty button on one of these. I think you ever remember you used to play Mortal Kombat in the arcade and like someone would have spilled a root beer on the buttons and there's a sticky. glitch or something like that. Yeah, like they're sticky. I think someone spilled root beer on my controller because I should be winning much more than 21 to nothing. Much more. You know you can switch receivers, right, in this game? I, I don't. <laughs> I, I mean, I, was, I guess it's B. <laughs> You're staring down the same guy, yeah. and Howie Long is going to break the record for interceptions in a game. In this. Yeah, somebody's criticizing me up in the booth for, for not yeah. going through my progressions. You're not going to be the Gruden's grinder in this game at all because you have to look off your receiver. You know I'm just throwing it to make you look good, right? I, I, don't do I that mean, anymore. I look I, great right now. <laughs> you, know, you need to look better. Yeah. Don't worry about me. Well, I mean, we, you know, you said we look alike, and, you know, so maybe... The, the, we do look alike. We definitely... 
aesthetically we both Tom might right? look okay, but uh, yeah, as far as the, oh, the way this sad. game is playing out, not so much. All right, so I only got seven seconds left. All right. And this isn't where clock management comes in, but I also am having so many kicking problems. You're going to win at halftime. I think I, I'll, I'll do the uh, I quit at halftime and reset the game. All right. Well, why don't we go out? Right, I love that. She yeah. doesn't go on your season record. Yeah. Why don't we go out with some pride here, Robin? If this is the last play of the half, show me a little something. Show me a positive. Oh, no. Look at what Vincent Bo Jackson is doing. This guy's never going to catch him, even in this game where you catch everybody. Six. Bo knows Tech Mobile, that's for sure. Bo knows Tech Mobile. Kyle Brandt knows football. Good morning, sort football. <laughs> Every weekday, Good morning, 7 football. o'clock. Yes, good night, Robin. NFL Network, goodbye, Robin. I've been vanquished. Is there a game we can play? Is it, is it RC Pro-Am or Rygar? What will be your game where you can beat me really badly? Well, you I don't play each other in Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. That was probably my favorite Nintendo game. Yes, um, Soda Papinski, yeah. Nun Flamenco. Uh, let's go to, like, Papa <laughs> Shot or something at the arcade, the, the actual Ooh. basketball shot. I, I'm in any time. Robert. Yeah, next time I'll, I'll get you. It'll this be the best interview I've ever done. All right. By far. Good night, Robin. Good morning, football. <laughs> bye bye. It's time for SI Now's Weekend Drive presented by Toyota. Let's go places. First, we head to Orlando for a crucial World Cup qualifying match between the U.S. and Panama. What some are dubbing the most important match in the last four years. The U.S. team is one point behind Los Canaleros for fourth place in the standings. U.S. captain Michael Bradley has been impressed by how Panama has built their squad up over the years. Guys who have played together, guys who have been on the field together in big games. There's real continuity in their team, in the way that they play. They're very organized, tactically disciplined. Athletically, they can cause you trouble. And they've found the right ways to add some younger players to their group. If the U.S. doesn't qualify for the World Cup, it would be the first time they do not make the big stage since 1986. Next, we travel west to Texas for a Big 12 battle between 8th-ranked TCU and 23rd-ranked West Virginia. Both teams are in the top 20 in total offense. In fact, West Virginia is second in the country, averaging 31 points and nearly 600 yards per game. Mountaineers head coach Dana Holgerson knows it will be a test with TCU's 16 returning starters. This team, he's got a really good football team. Uh, I think it starts when you can... You can say that you got around 16 senior starters. I mean, that, that's, that's impressive. Um, their depth is, is very apparent with what their depth chart looks like. That thing used to have about two people on it. Now it's got three and four people at each position. West Virginia climbed back into the rankings this week and with a win would be right behind Oklahoma in the Big 12 standings. Lastly, we headed Dallas for a playoff rematch between the Packers and the Cowboys. Dallas tight end Jason Witten believes the rivalry between two of the league's most storied franchises has been renewed, and he sees this matchup as a must win with the Cowboys sitting at 2-2. Two and two. It feels like we played them more than any other team. It's almost like it's a division opponent in a lot of ways, and so, uh, you know, that goes both ways, and I think there's a rivalry there that's certainly been long existing, but, uh, you know, here recently, with the playoff games and the way those playoff games have unfolded. So we got a lot of respect for them. And, and uh, you know, those, whenever you watch those games on film, it brings up a lot of raw emotions. And um, But you got to put that aside. And this is a new season and what you're focused on right now. And certainly our team needs to get the three and two going into the bye. Green Bay has had the edge thus far, winning two out of the last three games against Dallas. Both wins eliminated the Cowboys from the playoffs. And that's what's in store for this weekend.